Good morning, everybody. Welcome to vidIQ. Welcome to this weekly webinar where we're going to show you how to get more views in less time and educate your YouTube journey through vidIQ. Let's do this. VidIQ. VidIQ. VidIQ.com. Hello, everybody. Welcome to vidIQ. My name is Rob, and our mission here at vidIQ is to help you on your YouTube journey through educating you on our channel and helping you with tools to help you grow your channel a lot faster. Every single Wednesday, for all of our new users on vidIQ, we do this weekly webinar where we take you on a product tour of every single thing that we do on YouTube to help you find the right audience, get the right keywords, optimize your video's metadata, and analyze the success of your previous videos so that you know where to go next with your content. Now, I've started a little early today and we always start our Wednesday webinar a little early because we want to get to know you folks in the live stream chat. So wherever you are in the world right now, tell us where you are, what time is, and maybe what the weather's currently like because uh, we've had a very, very wet, um, windy and rainy uh, Vancouver traditional type of weather for the last month, well, two months. It's been absolutely horrible. So I want somebody in the world to tell me that they're enjoying some nicer weather right now. Hello then to people in the chat, include MBUGUI. I'm sorry if I pronounced your name wrong there. It's coming up to six o'clock for you and it is foggy. We're also saying hello to It's Exploring with Riley, and it's 5 p.m. there in England as well. Hello to all of the English viewers. As you may have noticed, I am English, uh, but I currently live in Vancouver in Canada. It's a lot nicer over here, I must admit, except for this time of year when it's just wet and cold. It is cold and rainy for Ali Crafts Pursuits. Uh, the Ferg, you're watching this in the pub. Well, have a pint on me for Shoreditch in London as well. Wow, so many people from the UK here. GTA Specialist is in India and it's 11.20 there. Fully Evolved Media Group in Charlotte, North, Charlotte, North Carolina. I'll try and get that word out correctly. 1pm for you. For Delta, it is... Uh, 10 to 7 and it's in Spain. I hope you're having some nicer weather in Spain. Gaming is out 10 to 11, presumably in the evening in Pakistan. And 30 and a wake up, it's cold and rainy in Valencia, Spain. So even Spain sometimes gets a little bit of uh, wet weather. Hello to the artist Heaven as well, our uh, ultra reliable moderator. Is the every single live stream that we do. So I always want to say a big thumbs up to you. Thank you very much. And we also have a super chat here from, uh, let's see, Nanny Honex. Thank you for the 99 cents in euros. That really is appreciated. I just want to give you a bit more background then on what we're going to be doing today. In about 10 minutes, as we just welcome everybody on board here on the webinar, we're going to take you through a product tour of vidIQ. Now, if I suddenly grow some hair, and I have a South African accent. Uh, that's because uh, Liron will actually be doing the product tour himself. And he's not here today. He's uh, uh, taking a well-earned vacation. And what we do is we pre-record the product tour because we want to give you the most viable and succinct information uh, through the product tour. Uh, and so we've done a nicely edited version of it just to make sure that you understand all of the tools and we don't miss anything out. However... At the end of a product tour, I will be back to take your questions. So there is going to be more of an interactive element to this live stream after a product tour. But ostensibly, I think that's the first time I've used that word on a live stream, ostensibly, this is for new users who are encountering vidIQ for the first time and they want to know what tools to use. And that's why we try and keep uh, a consistent basis for the product tour itself. But... Before we do all of that, I'm saying hello to all of you. Those people, including Generic Waffle, who is in the house, as always, Multi Electro, Dr. Moon SB. And we've also got Tor Build is here as well, Solve FN. Uh, thank you to every single one of you joining the live stream. Now, quick question uh, as we are kicking off the webinar. I want you to tell me what your channel is about in no more than five words. So, this is your value proposition. For example, if we were to do it here at vidIQ, our value proposition is educating your YouTube journey. We've managed to do that in four words. Oof. 
So rather than it just being gaming or like Fortnite uh, compilations, try and think of a way you can snappily tell us what your channel is about because that's something that's really important, messaging. Being able to communicate to your audience as quickly and as efficiently as possible what they're getting into when they watch some of your videos, uh, that is really key. So, for example, Desi Pardisi is a cooking channel with family. So, like, maybe... What, what makes that a special family cooking channel? Is it a certain type of dishes? Or do you do them very quickly? Or do the children help? Maybe there's a little bit more spice you can add, forgive a pun, uh, to that value proposition. Play, pay to win. F I throw my money at games. That's an interesting one. So you use somebody who's like downloading all of the DLCs and like uh, trying to f work out what are the best things to buy and then educating your audience on that. That's a, an interesting value proposition that you have. Uh, Kirsten's Curiosities, vintage reselling lifestyle. I like that as a value proposition. Uh, we've got funny Call of Duty gaming from Thid. Thib Duff, I think your name is. Uh, Fanica, videos saved from social media for people to find. So it sounds like you're doing uh, co uh, compilations. Generic Waffle, eats games. I think anybody would like to see a channel that just simply eats games. That would be really interesting. And Vanilla Storm Gaming, to bring, every, to bring games to everyone's life for you. Zombie Town USA, hodgepox mix of zombies. So is that zombie films, zombie games, zombie culture, that type of thing? I've just started playing Days Gone on the PlayStation 4, which is yet another zombie game. And I'm actually getting into it. There's been a lot of... Uh, critics, but I, I'm, I'm enjoying it so far. I like the, the the sandbox games where you can just go off and do wherever you want, and I'm quite enjoying it. Sorry, going into my uh, gaming roots there. I, I play a lot of games offline, but I rarely talk about them on um, on the live streams. But I think at some point in the future, maybe Dan and I, who are both gamers to a certain extent, Dan being a gaming expert, me being a laps gamer, we'll probably have to do some gaming live streams or something on VidIQ. Let, let us know, actually, in the comments if you'd like me uh, to do something like that. We have the vidIQ tools, legendary industry leading vidIQ tools that Liron is about to show you uh, for the next 40 minutes. But what I want to also introduce you to is something that you get with vidIQ when you purchase our pro and boost tools. So there's a lot of free users, but once you get onto one of the paid, to, to, paid tiers, as well as the vidIQ YouTube channel, where we give you lots of tips, tricks and advice and bite-sized videos, with a purchase of vidIQ, you get the vidIQ Academy. Uh, now, we're not doing channel audit today. Let me just delete this off the screen here. Uh, oh, no. Okay, let me just get rid of this bit here. Yeah, just to confirm, folks, we're not doing channel audits today. What we're doing is telling you all about vidIQ tools, and one of them is the Academy. Now, when you start your YouTube channel, there's a lot of things to consider and it can be a bit um, daunting. So we've put together a 30-day course in the vidIQ Academy and it gives you access to all of these courses already. We've got around about 75 plus courses here and our flagship one here is to launch your YouTube channel in 30 days. If I just quickly click on it, we've divided it into four sections. So you do Let's Get Creating channel and content building, video optimization, and the, all of the little details you have to make sure you get right on your channel, such as end screens and uh, embracing the weird testing, that type of thing, and setting manageable goals for your channel. That's just one of the courses. But as we've already seen, these these five other courses, including uh, ones that I've made on keyword research, earning money on YouTube, the complete beginner's guide, and Jeremy's done one on uh, creating awesome thumbnails. We're going to be growing this academy throughout the year, and we've already got some really good reviews and feedback on, on this. And I think there's about maybe five, six, seven hours worth of learning in the vidIQ academy. And you get all of this when you subscribe to any of the paid vidIQ tiers. And at the moment, we've got an offer on where you can save 30% on learning. Uh, and that's on, on everything, on the tools and on vidIQ itself. So... In order to uh, benefit from that, check out the description. I think there's a link down there uh, that will take you to the Academy. Uh, if you need to know the web address, it's vidIQ.com forward slash Academy hyphen preview to get that 30% discount. But yeah, I really want you to take advantage of the Academy there because uh, we're giving you an extra layer of advice uh, on top of everything else here that we give you on the channel. 
We are just a few minutes away from starting now the webinar product tour of vidIQ. So, uh, folks, let me know if you're ready with, a, with an uh, imaginative emoji, or if it's a thumbs up emoji, or a shot to emoji, or a, a smiley poo emoji. I don't mind what you send me in a live chat. I would really appreciate it. The one thing I want to remind you of is at the end of a product tour, I'm going to be back and I'm going to be taking your live question Q&A. These questions can be about uh, your YouTube channel specifically, vidIQ tools, or YouTube in general. I'm going to try my best to answer as many as I can after the live stream. Thank you for all of the emojis, by the way. I really do appreciate it. Ex Exploring with Riley has given me the most thumbs up, uh, so I appreciate that. And Solve FN with the most smileys. That is very nice as well. But yeah, hashtag question, and then write out your question. You can do it during the uh, product tour, uh, as we have moderators who will help you answer those questions in written form. But if you want me to go into a bit more detail, when I get back, and I will remind you, uh, include hashtag question. And we get all sorts of awesome questions. It might be stuff about like, uh, should I play one game or two games? Should I make longer videos or shorter videos? What's a good click through rate? We get all of those sorts of questions all of the time, and I'm very happy uh, to try and help you with those questions uh, after the product turn. And I say that'll be in about 40 minutes. We're coming up to the hour now. Uh, so folks, if you are ready uh, to have some education, give me the best education emoji you can, whether that's a mortarboard or the thinking emoji, and as soon as I see them on screen, we will kick off this uh, live stream product webinar. Another reminder as well, if you miss anything during the product tour, don't worry, this will be up as a replay almost immediately after the live stream has ended. We never take these off of YouTube, so if you want to um, re-watch any of the important parts, any of the tools that you need to get a bit more of a refresh on, do check them out. And also the Q&A afterwards. This will all be available as a replay uh, once this live stream is over. Sorry, I keep looking down at uh, my clock here. I'm just waiting for it to tick over to 10 o'clock to make sure that everybody who's wanting to watch us has joined. And we and now at 10 o'clock, wonderful emojis here, people with love hearts. What is this one here? Oh, Solve FN. I think that's a pile of books. And Desi Pardisi with the uh, spectacles. Oh, the Ferg. I love that one. Brain, face, mortarboard. Uh, is that a thinking cloud? Love them all. And with all, that bit, all of that being said, folks, you know what I think it's time for? It's time to show you what vidIQ is all about. Don't forget, I will be back in around about 40 minutes to answer your questions. Let's do this. VidIQ. VidIQ. VidIQ.com. Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to another VidIQ training session. My name is Liron Segev, and I am the Director of Customer Success here at VidIQ. What does that mean? It means that every single day I work with creators big and small, helping you guys rock your channel, get you to that next level. And that's what we're going to do today. The cool thing about vidIQ is a lot of us are actually creators ourselves. A lot of us actually have our own channel and we understand those frustrations. We know what happens when you spend all those time, hours, kind of very carefully creating those videos and then it doesn't work and you get really upset, really despondent. So that's what the solution that we create is all about helping you it's kind of get over that hurdle, unblock that. If you don't have vidIQ at the moment, that's totally cool. You can hang out with us and see everything we have to offer. If you do have vidIQ, the free version, in the description below, there's a 30-day free trial. Go and grab it because in 30 days, everything that I'm telling you today, if you do that, it will change your channel for absolute ever. So definitely go and check it out. You'll see there's so much value. Things will unlock today that have been locked forever. YouTube is essentially made up of three Ds. And you have to do all three of those Ds to be able to rock your channel. So the first D is discover. You need to be discovered by the YouTube algorithm, by the search engine, because the most amazing content that lives somewhere out there in the world that nobody knows about, that you haven't labeled correctly, you haven't told YouTube about you, is just pointless. The second D, you need to deliver. In other words, People have given you their click. They've stopped what they're doing. They've clicked on your video. Are you delivering? Did you click back? Did you get people to come to your video and it's bad quality and bad audio? So this you need to deliver because when you deliver, this is such a crucial metric for YouTube. It says, hey, this video looks pretty cool. 
I am going to start distributing it, which is the third D. I'm going to distribute it to a much wider audience so that that wider audience can see your content, not just your subscribers. It brings it up to the bigger YouTube community. And if those people are watching because you're delivering, then it will bring even bigger and even bigger and even bigger audience. And then your channel really, really explodes when that happens. Happened to me. I can tell you from personal experience that it's just one of those things that when it happens, it is absolutely incredible. But you've got to focus on delivering. You've got to focus on your quality of your content. But today, it's not about theory. Today, it's all about real practical step-by-step -step instruction of what you need to do to get those 3Ds. So with all that being ready, and we are ready to kind of get you really on that journey, this is where we begin, and we're gonna begin in the kitchen. Yes, that's where all YouTube begins. It begins in the kitchen. Not only do you have your cup of coffee, but now I want you to go to your kitchen, I want you to open a random cupboard, grab some random ingredients, stick them in a bowl, mix them all up, stick them in the oven, and let's see if a chocolate cake comes out. What are the odds of the chocolate cake come out? Mm, pretty much not much, right? And the reason for it, because you've done random stuff, you've mixed it together randomly, you've stuck it in the oven, in the oven for some random time, there's no way a chocolate cake is gonna come out. And yet that is how we approach our YouTube as well. We go out there, we grab our camera, we go and film, we come home, we edit, we cut, we paste, we create a cool video, we throw it together at some random title, description and tags, upload it and then go, I hope something comes out. I hope my chocolate cake works. I hope my video works. That's never gonna work. However, what if I said to you, look, here are the, here's the ingredients. Here is what you need to buy. This is how you mix it with these ratios. And then you mix it in this format and then you stick it in the oven for this long period of time. Well, what are the odds of chocolate cake coming out then? Much better. Well, YouTube is about following a recipe, very much like the chocolate cake. Today, I'm gonna to show you that recipe. I'm gonna show you the step that you need so that you have yourself the best opportunity to get your videos ranked, your videos seen, and I'm gonna show you exactly what you need to do to be able to do that right now. This is where everything starts. This is the Google, the YouTube search bar. What I want you to do is go put in there the word chocolate cake. There it is, chocolate cake. When that comes out, I am now thinking, hey, I've got a channel. Do I wanna make a video about this keyword, about this thing called chocolate cake? What I'm gonna do is I put my keywords in here in the search. By the way, of course, this will work for absolutely any keyword whatsoever but we're gonna stick with a chocolate cake simply because it's universal whether you're from pakistan from india with the philippines the, the far east the middle east the us anywhere in the world you are going to know what a chocolate cake is which is why i stick with this as the example so chocolate cake is in here the first thing i do is i go look down here look at this bar it says vidiq search volume and it's nice and green what does that mean it means a lot and a lot of people are searching for this. A lot of people are searching for your keyword. And in, so do you just rush out and make the video? No, because you gotta look at this matrix as well. It says competition score. It's in the red. What does that mean? It means, yes, we have a lot of people searching for chocolate cake, but we also have a lot of competition delivering on this term chocolate cake. So what, are, what, what do I do now? I mean, I really wanna make a chocolate cake video, but look at that competition. I'm never gonna rank against these videos. I mean, some of these things have got 45 million views. I, I'm never gonna rank against them. So ideally, what you want is a term that is in the green. In other words, lots of people are searching and competition score is down here somewhere. That, when that happens, that is a beautiful match. You have got yourself a keyword that's highly searched for, but people are not delivering content. So this is where essentially you start. But let's stick with our, with our example here. We can see competition is very high, search volume is very high. What do I do now? What you do now is something is gonna change the way you do YouTube. Remember, YouTube is the world's second largest search engine. What do you do in a search engine? You ask questions. And what YouTube's job is, is to marry up your question with somebody's video. Okay, again, YouTube is a search engine. It wants to give you answers to the question that you've asked. So here is a good hack. What you're gonna do, you're gonna go to chocolate cake in your search bar, 
you input space, and you're going to do the alphabet walkthrough. A. Chocolate cake at home. B. Chocolate cake banana. C. D. E. F. G. Right? What am I doing? I am using YouTube's own autocomplete because YouTuber says, okay, so many people have around the world have searched for chocolate cake in. So the next person that starts to type the letter I, I'm going to make it easy for them to find their video immediately. So chocolate cake in a microwave seems to be pretty darn popular. So popular that all of a sudden it comes up in my autocomplete. If I was making a chocolate cake video, what I would do is I would say chocolate cake in a mug or in a microwave. Oh, and then in a mug. I would definitely not stick a chocolate cake in a pressure cooker, but that could be a fun video too. So chocolate cake in a microwave, chocolate cake in a mug. Look how I'm already tapping into those search phrases that people are already searching for so that I know that people are searching for it to the point that it come up in here. It came up in search. Therefore, enough people are searching that I potentially have some eyeballs that are going to come to my video. But there is even more. You go to the beginning. Remember, YouTube is a search engine. What do you do with a search engine? You ask questions. Go to the beginning. What? What's the chocolate cake? What is the ingredients of chocolate cake? Where? Where is my chocolate cake? Why chocolate cake cracks? I always love it when this one comes up. Why chocolate cake cracks? If you have a cooking channel, if you or even if you have a kid's channel, why chocolate cake cracks and how to fix it? Think of that title. Right now, this has just told you exactly what YouTube wants. It told you what people are searching for. So go in there, what, where, when, how, why. Now let's go to this video. Let's go check out who our competition is. Remember, we're still in research mode. Most people will say, a good video is a video that has millions and millions of views. That's a fairly kind of okay statement to make. You know, we kind of judge whether a video is good or bad based by the amount of views that it has. That's fair enough. Here is the problem. The problem with the number of views is that it doesn't tell you time. It doesn't give you how long it took to get to those number of views. They got to 7 million views on this video. Did it take a day, a month, a year, five years? I have no idea. So if I just looked at this, at the total number of views, and made my entire decision, do I make my next big hit based on, oh, they got 7 million views, I'm going to make a chocolate cake video so I can get some of those millions of views. Well, you could be flawed. I'll tell you why. Because when the iPhone 1 came out, I don't know, or the Samsung Galaxy Note 1 came out, I'm a geek techie guy, so that's going to happen. Um, when those phones came out, years ago, those videos have got millions and millions of views. But what are the odds of those videos getting millions of views today? That is what's important. Is, what, is it still relevant today? That is critical. So instead of just looking at the total number of views, what we do is we expose something called views per hour, VPH. And wow, is this critical. Because views per hour tells me right now, people are watching this video today. As we sit here, people are watching this video. And if they're watching this video, it means it's still relevant right now. So forget the number of views. I'm much more interested in the views per hour. And click on historical. Watch this. Over time, did this term get stronger or weaker? Remember, I'm just using chocolate cake. You can use absolutely anything that is specific to you and your channel. But look at this. Over time, look how much that has increased. The interest in chocolate cake has gone up. This is a great indicator together with the views per hour. That tells me if you're going to make a video, this is a good topic. If this had one view per hour, who cares how many views this has got in total? Nobody cares today about this topic. As we go down the scorecard here, you're going to see a whole bunch. Do they use any Reddit um, strategies, a little bit of Facebook? But look at this. To me, this is gold. This is uh, just the best tool in the world. I know we created it. I am a little bit biased, but I absolutely love this tool. This is the compare views in the first 28 days tool. Essentially what this does, it says, look, you're in research mode. You want to know, is this a regular video for this channel? Yes, they got 15 million subscribers. 
Is this just one of those uh, regular video that they just turned out? Or does this video perform exceptionally well? In other words, it's an outlier video. It's so well, it went way above the channel. And this is what this, this does for you. It says, look at this video compared to this channel's average. Now, this channel's average is here. It's the pink. This video is the blue. Instantly, you can see this is an amazing video. Now you want to study it. Now you want to say, after the first day, how many views did it get compared to the channel average? On the seventh day, how many views did it get compared to the channel? So for example, this channel's average is between 140 and 230,000 views after seven days. This video got 854,000 views. In other words, this is an outlier video. This video performs remarkably well. How awesome is this tool? You can go to any video and go and watch this, that video compared to that channel's average. But it gets even better because you can go in here and you can compare it to your channel's average, to the last video you watched on YouTube, to any video on YouTube, any playlist, any channel, and your competitor's average. And I'll show you competitors as well. So this is super duper powerful. You go to any video when you're doing your research. Remember, haven't picked up the camera yet. I want to be the first D. I want to be discovered. So I'm going to do all my legwork right now to understand what works in this world and what doesn't. Now that I know that this is a great video, what's next? What's the next step? Well, the next step is you're going to go into one of the tools. It is something called competitors. Now I'm going to click on competitors. And what competitor does is these are my competitors. This is VidIQ's competitors. And competitor is a bit of a strong term. Essentially, what this is, it's other people who are doing similar content than we are. It's people we want to keep our eye on, people that we work with, people that we love, people that we hang out with at events with. But what I want to see, so why would I want to see what they're up to? Well, I want to see what they're up to because I want to understand what's their thumbnail strategy. Are they still using short, term, short titles or long titles? What is their views per hour? Remember, views per hour. I don't care how many views um, these, these videos got, but I care about this. I know if this many people are interested in this topic, I need to explore that further. So you do the same on your channel. You go find your competitors, 10, 15 competitors, big channels, little channels. Go keep an eye on what they're up to. See if anything you can learn from. What's their thumbnail like? Look, people have gone dark now. Um, Cody has gone dark. Brian Johnson has gone dark. You know, faces are still a thing. I'm learning all the time. I'm learning what my competitors are doing so I can keep ahead. Remember, YouTube is about trends. YouTube knows. We don't watch one video and then leave and then go and make a buying decision. We watch multiple videos about the same topic. We all do. If you're going to buy a new device, a new gadget, you're going to watch reviews. You're going to watch three, four, five reviews before you make a decision. This is what YouTube does. It knows that we will watch multiple videos about the same topic. So YouTube suggests videos for you to watch. So making sure that you are always getting content that you're looking for. So if I know that these guys are starting to talk about certain topics that I talk about, well, maybe YouTube will suggest my video to the same audience because I'm talking about similar topics. How cool is that? Go load up 10, 15 competitors. Keep your eye on their thumbnails, their titles, their views per hour. Understand what's trending so that you guys can actually make content similar to within your industry and then get those views when YouTube starts suggesting those videos. Because trends is where it's at. And because trend is where it's at, we've got something called trend alerts. And when you go and you create a trend alerts, here's what happens. Typically, a lot of us understand trends once they have become trends. We understand things that have already popped. Um, some things like Baby Shark is a very, very bad example. Um, Fortnite, I mean, any of those things that were really kind of popped, the challenges, things of that nature. But a lot of us will only see it once. There's been so much hoo-ha about this online, so much noise that we kind of riding the very tail end of those trends. Watch this. Give it a give it a give it a name. Let's just use Fortnite as a bad example. Well, if you're a gaming channel, you'll put Fortnite. Maybe you'll put PUBG. If you're a car channel, maybe you're gonna put the brand names of these cars into these trend alerts because this is what it does. You can use little keywords or big keywords. So Fortnite is obviously a big keyword. 
I'm basically telling vidIQ, look vidIQ, I'm really interested in this term for Fortnite. If anybody makes a video that gets more than a thousand views per hour, not in total, a thousand views per hour, let me know and I'll get a report that looks like this. And I can get it every day, every two days, each week, each month. So in other words, I can already keep an eye on what's popping in my industry because when I see a video, or whatever it may be, when I see a video going from 100 views per hour, next time I see the same video, it's at 500 views per hour, and then it's at 1,000 views per hour, wow, something is happening. I need to go and investigate. I need to understand why that video is moving so quickly. Why is it going from 100 to 500 to 1,000? and I need to understand it quickly, so perhaps I go and make a video around the same topic. And you can create multiple alerts. So you can have Fortnite, create another alert, PUBG, another alert, Call of Duty, or whatever it may be. And in your industry, you know the keywords that you're constantly searching for when you're keeping your eye on your competitors. Those are the keywords that you stick into. The next thing is most viewed. Now, most viewed can become weird. This is everything that's viewed on YouTube at the moment. Now, before you tell me, yes, there is the trending page, I'm fully aware of it, but what this is, it's everything that's rocking on YouTube right now, sorted by views per hour. Now, how powerful is that? Essentially, this video is getting 704,000 views per hour. The PewDiePie, 249,000 views per hour. David Dobrik, 130,000 views per hour. Why do we care, realistically? Well, firstly, you're in a YouTube game. You need to know what's happening on YouTube as the bigger picture. You need to know what these channels are up to, what's attracting audiences. You need to keep your eye on that. But now you're gonna say to me, Apple TV has got however many, um, 52,000 subs, but it's Apple. You've got David Dobrik who's got 13 million um, subscribers. Well, how do I even play in this game? Good question. What you do, you go all the way down to the bottom here, and you say, you know what? only show me channels between 100,000 and a million subscribers. Now this changes the game. Now it's getting much closer to perhaps your world. You can make it anything that's getting a um, thousand to 10,000 subscribers, whatever is closest to your world. And then you can start searching even more by categories, by countries, even do some search terms. If I had a kid's channel, I would just live on here because here it's exposed to me immediately, the thumbnails that these people are using. It exposes to me the title. This person has hit every keyword. It's got a great thumbnail. Slime is a big term. ASMR is a big term. Relaxing slime is a big term. They clearly know what they're doing. They've used all the right stuff. And look at this. It's just rocking at 30,000 views per hour. Okay. Very, very, very powerful. Guys, you get all these tools if you're using the free vidIQ, um, but because you're on this webinar, you can go down into the link and get the full 30 days. I'm gonna unlock all this for you. So in 30 days, you can see the power that you can immediately generate on your channel. Remember, this is only, we still haven't done, we still haven't finished. This is still the first D, this is just being discovered. Look how much kind of research you need to do because why waste your time on something that's not gonna work? Once you've done that research, you're gonna come back into this page because you've now shot your video, you're now ready to roll, you now got your title because you know what your title is because you've done that research. And as you go through here, you're gonna say, okay, this is a video that Rob did, how to delete YouTube videos 2019, new method. What's key here? Well, what's key here is the title. The title is key. This is what YouTube looks at the most. Then description and then tags. Now together, they all make up the metadata that a YouTube needs, that the search engine needs in order to go ahead and understand what's in your video. Yes, YouTube watches your video. Yes, they watch your thumbnail. But when you put them all together, you're just feeding the beast. You're saying, hey, I'm gonna tell you what my video is about. So you can see here, how to delete YouTube videos 2019 is repeated in the first line of the description. How to delete a vid YouTube videos in 2019. I'm telling YouTube twice. Oh, guess what? I'm also telling YouTube down here in the tags, again, what this video is about. Now there's no misunderstanding. And look how beautifully this is ranking for it. The, one, the numbers in blue is what it's ranking for. This is just an absolute superb video. Let me show you how you do this. As you start typing, it's gonna give you the term, it's gonna give you 
a whole bunch of um, a bunch of scores so you know which tags have got more value than other tags now watch this check this out this is gonna this is like my favorite part here mother's day okay these are all the related keywords for mother's day but watch this okay what's the interest over time well it's pretty much wavering can you see that but it's coming down mother's day is done so what is working is things around Mother's Day, Mother's Day songs, Mother's Day, uh, Happy Mother's Day, Mother's Day's card. Now, if you didn't make a Mother's Day video this year, should you just give up on this term? Watch this. You click on all time. And now what this does, it evaluates the term Mother's Day in this particular case over a period of time. So since 2008, look at this. Every single year, there is a spike. What does this mean? It means that when you didn't make a video this year for Mother's Day, should you be making a video for Mother's Day next um, next year? Absolutely. You know it's going to hit. The likelihood of it, it popping around Mother's Day next year is huge because every single year it is hit. So why would this year, next year be any different? And the cool thing about this is that a date you can just use again and again and again. So you can say, how to make your mother Mother's Day best, the ultimate Mother's Day chocolate cake um, how-to video, 2019. Next year, delete 2019, label it as 2020. The same information applies. So always check the term, check it against 30 days, check it against all time. And that's going to give you a lot of valuable information, what's relevant today, versus what's relevant once a year or maybe multiple times a year. These are tent pole events, things like Christmas, New Year's, um, Independence Day. You know the big ones. Also, don't forget, if you don't live in the US, what is your local country's um, big big events, big tent pole events? South Africa, we had National Bry Day, which is barbecue day. Now that I know what my tags are, I've got a cool description. And by the way, description is important. Don't just give it one line. Give it a lot of information. Feed the beast. Tell YouTube what your videos are about. Scroll further down. I get a checklist. Hey, did I add it to a card? Have I added it to an end screen? Have I got closed caption? We don't monetize our channel, so that's fine to have the X. Playlist, public, did we share it? Oop, may not need to share this video. Right, Facebook, etc. This just keeps a good checklist to help you get more exposure. Down here, more keywords, and down here is videos to gain views from. What does that mean? Well, remember, YouTube wants to pair videos together. It wants to know that people are going to watch a how to delete a YouTube video. Well, perhaps there's other videos here that are already speaking about the same topic, and maybe I can use some of these keywords to try link them to my video so I can get those eyeballs. When somebody watches that video, maybe YouTube will recommend my video next. But watch this. Best time to publish. This is so critical. Remember I was speaking about VPH, views per hour, right? When you launch a video, YouTube doesn't know if it's a good or a bad video yet. It has no idea. But when you launch it and your audience comes immediately and they watch and you're keeping them hooked and you're keeping them on the, on the video for long and they're watching your next video, those are insanely beautiful signals to YouTube that YouTube says, wow, this is quality, quality video. And that's when you begin unlocking that third, that's, that second D. YouTube says, okay, are you delivering? So how do you get the most eyeballs on your video as you launch? Well, you simply use the best time to publish on your channel tool. Go through the days of the week, whichever day you happen to be on. If we launched a video, I don't know, on a Tuesday, between 9 and 11 seems to be our best time. I would probably launch it a little bit before here so I can get the up run as people are logging on. And remember, try not to launch videos on the hour like 10, 11, 12, or on the half hour, 10, 30, 11, 30, 12, 30. The reason for it is because a lot of the big corporates, a lot of people that schedule videos way ahead of time, they typically launch um, at those time periods. So I kind of launch my video 9.46 or 10.32. You know, something weird where you're going to be the notification that people watch because you didn't receive like 30 notifications on your phone at once. So just a bit of a ninja tactic there. What's next is the th second D. Did you deliver? Well, this is when the channel audit tool comes into play. Now, this, 
again, um, this is what I was missing when I was trying to work out this YouTube game myself before I joined vidIQ. This is so important because I have no idea. I don't know about you, but I don't want to spend 30 hours of my life trying to understand YouTube analytics. Just push a button and tell me what's working and what isn't working. This is what the channel audit does. So over the last 30 days, how many views did you get on your channel compared to the previous month? Are you growing or are you shrinking? If you're growing, do you know why? If you're shrinking, do you know why? And look at this, content to double down on. Essentially, double down is a term that means make more of these. You think double down, go big, because people are loving this content. Why? Look, these videos are giving me, are giving me views per hour. These videos are giving me the engagement rates, giving me views, giving me subscribers. How many subscribers did these videos give me? How many subscribers per 1,000 views? So I know what's working. I know what my audience wants. Same on your channel. You look at your audience, and maybe your audience is telling you what they want, and you're just not seeing it. But this will show that to you. And scroll further down. Total watch time. Total average watch time. Top retention. What are these? These are the stuff that YouTube is looking for. Which videos are giving are keeping people watching? What is the watch time, the average watch time, and the retention? So people are loving these content. Guess what I'm going to do? Make more of these style videos. I can immediately see, look at when we have a comparison tool between uh, these, these data graphs, I can already see that that's popping. Instantly, I can see that. Therefore, I'm going to make more of these. Okay? Can you see how powerful this is? It's the stuff to make more of. As you scroll further down, it even tells you, look, these are the top search terms. This is what people search to get on, to get to your videos. How to download a YouTube video. Look how cool that is. 30,000. Look at these TCs versus PewDiePie. Great. Your audience still wants that. Do we make more content around this? Absolutely. End screen click, um, click rates. What are people clicking on the end screen the most? Well, for us, it's videos. Perfect. And best for viewer. Great. Guess what I'm going to stick on my end screen? Less playlist, more of this stuff. Look at the card click rates. Polls, 57%. People love engaging in our polls. Guess what I'm going to be doing? Making more polls. It tells you this. This is the stuff that's working. And just as importantly, the stuff that isn't working. Guys, this is the content that could use work on our channel. You guys didn't really dig this content. Lowest average watch time, lowest retention, um, lowest like radio, um, ratio. People love Jack Black, and apparently Rob managed to upset quite a lot of people by doing this video. Okay, note to self, don't mess with Jack. Cool, now we know. Lowest view, look, these videos are losing our subscribers. Well, what do we do? We're going to investigate these things and work out, hold on, um, are these things badly done? Bad time of year. Do we have to redo them? Maybe our thumbnails wasn't up to scratch. All of those things. I'm asking ourselves the question again and again so the videos appear in this section, in the stuff to do more of. And um, remember, if you have a, let's just say, back to our cooking channel, if you love your chocolate cake recipes, but guess what? Every time you do that, they're in the content that could use work section. But every time you do something about a barbecue, it's always in the top section. Guess what your audience wants from you? More barbecue recipes, less chocolate cake recipes. See how powerful this is. It exposes that information. Are you delivering? That's that second D. We've been discovered. Now, are you delivering? And again, as you scroll further down, average metrics over the last 30 days. What was your title length, description length, etc.? And then items to improve upon. Look here. We got six videos instantly. It's in red, which don't have an end screen. I need to go fix that. Do, do all your videos have cards? Do they all have custom thumbnails? Will they all edit your playlist? Will, how many are you posting each week? Important information. I go straight to the red and I go and I make those changes. If I had a YouTube channel, which I do, I live in this. This tells me if I'm delivering because if I'm not delivering, I have a problem. If I am delivering, it all that means, it means my audience is loving what I'm doing and then YouTube is going to unlock that third D, which is distribution. And when we're talking about distribution, we're talking about YouTube says, look, these are great signs. People are loving your content. If they're loving your content, I'm going to show it to a different audience. 
I'm going to test your videos with an audience who's never heard of you, an audience who's maybe searched for you but never landed on your video. I'm going to show them your video. What's going to happen here? You're going to get to a point where your videos start getting out further and further, and you're going to unlock these achievements. And when you unlock these achievements, we create this lovely certificate for you. And let me tell you why this is a growth strategy. When you see a certificate like this, congratulations, vidIQ, you've cracked 350,000 subscribers on this date. What do we do? We share it. We share it on social media, and people love to see that they were part of that journey, and they love to be part of a journey. So they give you a thumbs up. Hey, I'm one of those 350. Hey, I was with you from the start. And they retweet it. Guess what happens? Other people see those retweets. They see what's going on with this channel. What is this channel? Click, and it gives you an opportunity to get more subscribers. So as soon as you hit those milestones, go ahead and share that certificate. Tag vidIQ when you do that, at vidIQ, and we will help spread your word, spread your channel even further. It is a beautiful, beautiful growth strategy. And remember, this obviously gets adjusted for your channel. We you know you're not going to hit your first key achievement when you get 350,000, of course. Each channel, this is customized for you so that you can share your success as soon as you hit it. Lots of cool metrics is here, lots of cool information. Like, for example, how far are you? We're on pace for 400,000 subscribers by this date. Uh, we use this as a challenge. Are we really going to wait? No. So this is what's going to happen. I'm going to start going harder and harder and try getting to those subscribers. Those are the ways to use vidIQ. Hopefully you've understood the 3Ds. The, uh, being discovered is all about that research. Being discovered is all about getting that content out there in a way that people want to see it. Go to the caption, use autocomplete, and really home in those titles because that is where you win. That is where the audience finds you, and that's where they see, oh, new content, didn't see this before, let me go push play. Then your second E, deliver that content. Go and look at your most viewed, go look at your channel audit, see what's working on your channel, and just do more of it, deliver more of that content, so that people just will love you, more of it. they're gonna distribute your work, they're gonna share it with their friends, and your channel grows and grows and grows, and then you just rock those achievements and we look forward for you tweeting them, sharing them on Facebook, tag us in so that we could retweet you because we love to see success when, when you're there. Hopefully this was useful, it was a bit of a intensive training, I you know, about 50 minutes now or so, just going through all the steps. If you just do those steps, if you just make your chocolate cake the correct way, not by grabbing stuff into a bowl and hoping for the best, but by doing that research, following the recipe, following that engagement, following the process, that is how you win. And you just got to get 1% better with every video, 1% better with every video. And that's you slowly, slowly crawling away and never compare yourself to anyone else because that's the kiss of death. Don't ever, ever do that. And um, finally, before we go, in the link, there's a 30-day boost trial. If anybody's not on boost and you really want to get all the advantage of everything I've just showed you, go ahead, register for this, get your coupon, get onto the system and then rock your channel. Try it for 30 days. You'll see what a world of a difference it makes. I personally prefer to film than spend hours doing my research. Now I can push a button, get that research done so I can go ahead and fo follow my passion and do my filming. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you had a good time. Um, you're able to place on that replay. will still be live. So if you missed anything, obviously go back. Share this with one of your friends, anyone who wants to see this. We do this every single Wednesday. Go to vidIQ.com forward slash webinar and register for the next one. If you're here and you want to hear it again next week, ah, coming on, we got space. We'll see you guys on the next episode. Thanks for watching. My name is Liran Segev. We'll see you next time. Cheers. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is your product tour of the vidIQ software. Pretty much every single tool we have, uh, we've 
I'm not going to say brushed over, but touched uh, to a certain point of view. And if you want more detailed tutorials on any of these tools, uh, check out the vidIQ tools playlist. Uh, we have that in the video description. But yeah, what do you think of vidIQ? Do you think it's going to help you grow your channel? Let us know in the comments what might be your favorite tool that you're going to use on a regular basis here at vidIQ. Going to take your questions in just a moment. I just want to remind you all, if you are new to vidIQ and this is the first time you've seen the vidIQ tools and it's like, wow, there's so much there. Well, there's a lot to take in. Don't worry. This live stream will be available as a replay uh, once it has finished. And I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't further recommend to you uh, the awesome tools that we have. about many aspects of growing your YouTube channel. We spend 10, 15 minutes per video on YouTube. We spend an hour, an hour and a half per topic in the vidIQ Academy. And if you start today, you can get 30% off your learning and the tools as well. If you go to vidIQ.com forward slash academy hyphen preview. Let's now take it to you folks. I'm going to be here uh, for the next wee while to take your questions live here on the webinar. So if you have a question, it really helps me if you start with hashtag question so that I can clearly see it in the chat. I'm going to be looking basically at what's over to uh, my right on screen, but I'm actually pointing left into the middle of nowhere uh, in the studio. And yeah, let's see what the questions are. If you don't get it answered the first time, maybe just ask it again, because if a question appears and I spend a bit of time responding to it, uh, pre other questions might disappear. So don't worry, I'm going to try and take as many as I can, but sometimes they disappear. And we'll take the first one here from the OMT, which is the best way to get results for growth for my music channel. You would create original music and most tags of my genre are three words or less. So when we've audited music channels, what we found is that you need to find a way to give value to your audience as well as maybe promoting your music because it's very difficult for musical artists who haven't got a reputation to get found. What we found is that creators who are offering maybe free beats or tutorials on how to do certain things in music as well as introducing their own music can help a lot. So you might have a flagship video that's how to create this beat from your from or you're giving away a free beat and you get lots of views from that video. And in that video, you ask people to subscribe to your channel and say, hey, I do some um, original music on my channel as well. And I want you to take a look at them take a look at that content. In terms of tags, um, try and be as specific as you can for the type of genre your music is in, uh, but try not to think too much about the, the, the metadata in terms of tags and things. You need to have a compelling thumbnail and an intriguing title that has an emotional pull on a viewer and it convinces them to click. But I don't envy music channels. They do uh, often struggle to be noticed on YouTube. Just another thing I would also do as well is if you're creating music videos, maybe create a playlist and a compilation. So if you have uh, 12 videos of music, you could put all of those 12 pieces of music into one video to create a mini uh playlist within a video as well. That might be another tactic. So good luck there. Uh, question from the GTA specialist. Why is growing a gaming channel so difficult? The simple answer is everybody wants to be a gaming channel. So it's super competitive. You need to find your own particular, sometimes we call this a superpower. In other words, if I've got a selection of 10, 20, 30 gaming channels in front of me. Why should I pick your channel? What makes you different? Can you provide me something that I can't get anywhere else? And then the next thing is that, and we talk about this a lot, and Dan's talked this a lot about this on his gaming tutorials, which you want to see on the vidIQ channel, is sticking to one particular niche, topic, or core uh, solution. Examples of gaming channels that we've seen successful are people who focus on one particular unusual niche which they can dominate. Somebody who's got a gaming channel with 10,000 plus subscribers f focuses on nothing but gaming mouses. Another channel had real success with showing you the different crosshairs in Fortnite. Yeah, that sounds super specific, but when he did those particular videos, they performed better than anything else. Another channel focused on 
improving gamers performance on Fortnite, getting more frames per second. So can you see how specific and niche you, you sometimes have to go to be a gaming channel? That's where you will find a smaller audience to begin with, but the audience will start to grow. And when once you have a following, maybe a thousand subscribers, 10,000 subscribers, you can take them on a journey wherever you want. But yes, I don't disagree. Starting out as a gaming channel is hard. You have to find a unique uh, selling point for your um, content. And check out Dan's uh, tutorials as well on the VidIQ channel, and we'll have a, we're having a lot more coming out as well. Who knows, we may even have a How to Start a Gaming Channel Academy. And Wow, I think, Dan, that'll probably be seven hours long, so you best want to get started on that as soon as possible. The next question is coming from Hitting Bedrock. How do I get people hooked in a video? Any intro advice? So... General advice would be to keep your intro to 10 to 15 seconds and try and give them either a tease or a climactic moment that doesn't fully deliver. So if you're telling a story, it might be the moment of where somebody is about to say yes or no to something or something dramatic is about to happen, like you're about to hit a tree or whatever. Uh, something that's uh, the climactic moment in a story or if it's tutorial educational stuff, maybe tell the viewer exactly what they're going to get from the video. Maybe offer the payoff. So if it's hairstyles, you can show them the final product of like, this is what your hair is going to end up looking like. Obviously for me, that's going to be a little bit difficult. Uh, but if it's like hair braiding and longer hair, you can show what the final result is. But the viewer's got to watch the rest of the video to get there. And you can tease that as in the thumbnail as well, showing where the viewer is going to end up at the end of the journey. But they've got to watch the content to get there. So that's what I would suggest for the hook. And maybe if you're going to spend longer than anything else on a video, it's probably the introduction to get that absolutely right. And this is something I'm still experimenting with. You can check out all of VidIQ's videos. The intro is usually 20 seconds or less, and I try and introduce some comedic moments in some of them, or something that's very serious and hard-hitting. But I'm still practical on, on that. But those are the general rules for intros. Thank you for the question there. The next one I'm going to answer is, it's exploring with Riley. Am I allowed to make tear down videos? So I assume that's where you dismantle something and show the innards, innards and the components and how everything works. I think there is a very famous YouTuber whose name slightly escapes me. I think it's Jerry Rigg. Uh, who does these teardowns and f works out how durable something is. So absolutely, I don't think there's anything wrong with doing that. You're just advising consumers on what a, what a product is like, if that's the type of thing that you're looking to do. And people are always breaking down things, whether it's a film, whether it's how a video game works, how YouTube works. So I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I guess you just have to find the audience that is interested in, in that type of thing. So good luck with that. Technical talks. Please give tips to promote tech channels. I am sharing on social platforms and using proper keywords after a research, uh, but you've got a sad face there. So what my guess is that, what type of tech are you covering? And if you're just saying tech, then it's too broad. You're going to have to niche down into whether you're covering Android apps or whether you're covering um, laptops or mobile phones or there's a particular type of strategy whereby you're buying something with a certain budget, like how to buy a mobile phone for less than $20, how to buy a laptop for less than $20. All sounds completely ridiculous, but again, you've got to find your unique selling point. And what a lot of tech uh, YouTubers do to begin with, which is absolutely fine, is that they review the tech they have in their possession. Now, that means that you may be reviewing an iPhone at six months old or you're reviewing a vacuum cleaner. What sort of audience is there? And it's just a case of testing. Testing which videos work best for your audience. And after maybe 50 videos, you'll have a sample size and you can find out which videos perform better than others and then maybe target that particular type of tech. Uh, with me, I made tech, channel, tech videos for three years without really finding a particular niche and I stumbled upon how to record your iPhone screen, iOS screen. And that became my niche on YouTube. And as crazy as this sounds, I can make... 50, 100 videos on that topic, and whenever I release a video on that particular topic, I would get loads more views because YouTube recognized that I was very good at producing that content, and YouTube recognized the audience that wanted to see that content, and it would serve it straight up to them, and they would watch it. So that's the best uh, quick tips I could give you for a tech channel. Uh, the next one 
it comes from uh, I, I guess Slim's Five and Clash Royale how to win the audience in the first 10 seconds kind of already answered that in how to do a quick intro if you're doing Clash Royale stuff maybe have the most dramatic moment in the video where it's a big kill or like taking down a, a castle or like a big swarm attack or like the, the payoff like you'll be able to master this card deck by the end of this video and showing how uh, like a brief insight into how powerful that card deck is at the very beginning. That might help you with that. Uh, Besega, is Outer World still relevant because I want to make an in-depth video on secret areas and hidden secrets? Guess Dan might, Dan might be able to better answer this in the chat. But essentially, all games are still relevant to a certain audience. It depends how many people are still making content for that particular game. For example, let's say... There's 10 million people interested in Fortnite, but there are 5 million YouTube channels dedicated to Fortnite. So you're probably you're competing almost for like two views per channel in that sense. And obviously, bigger channels are going to eat up a bigger piece of that pie. Let's go to this Outer Worlds uh, channel. Um, let's say there's 100,000 people interested in Fortnite, in Outer Worlds. So fraction of the people that are interested in Fortnite, but there are only 10 channels dedicated to making Outer Worlds content. That means there's a, a lot more potential audience to be spread around that much smaller uh, audience base. So you have to think of it on, on that on those terms. And also, again, how are you going to provide something different and new to your audience? If you're doing an in-depth video, that's fantastic, but are you going to show them something new, which they can't get anywhere else, or not many people know about this secret that's in the game? So I think any game is relevant. I know this channel's right now we're dominating with No Man's Sky because a lot of creators moved away from that game because it wasn't very successful. Some people stuck to it. Now it's getting a bit more popular again and people are trying to find content on YouTube and, and it's just these couple of channels that are still making content. Another one is Splatoon 2. Another channel is really crushing it with Splatoon 2. And now they're making more content towards Splatoon 3 when it's released, I think. And the, the, again, the, uh, through determination, dedication, spending a lot of time on one topic, they're now seen as the authorities on those topics and really reaping the rewards there. Cyrus and Silas, how, uh, if I pronounce your name right there, how can skits grow? So you're really chasing the trending memes and comedy moments, I guess. So any skits that you're making may want to be tied into something that's potentially happening now, uh, whether it might have been the Old Town Road music last year, the Super Bowl's coming up, uh, popular memes, uh, Donald Trump or whoever's popular in the news. You may want to try and tie those skits into something that's relevant. Because again, at the moment, people are asking the question, why should I watch your content? They don't care about you specifically yet because you have no rapport or relationship with the audience. So that's why you need to tie into something that's maybe relevant to the audience right now. So maybe think of it along those lines in terms of the skits. Question from Julian HG. What about those of us that make cool things? I can't just make the same thing over and over. I do metal casting woodwork. Will YouTube penalize me because I'm not niche? So here's a thing again about making cool and unique things. A lot of channels have been successful uh, with these cool and unique things by tying them into popular culture. So that could have been, as you said, you were metal casting. What, what if you made the first metal lightsaber? or Metal Gun Blaster, or the first uh, Metal Star Destroyer. Is that possible? I don't know. I've never seen that on YouTube before. I always feel as if you're able to, again, tie your content into themes that are relevant to an audience, and you draw them into your unique way of displaying that uh, theme and, and those motifs. That's where I think you will find your... Your niche as the only person who's able to create these special things for a broader audience. So coming up this year, there's probably more Marvel videos, uh, Mar Marvel stuff. I mean, maybe the Baby Yoda. That was super popular uh, from the Mandalorian uh, theme and memes before Christmas. How could you maybe tie into that? Think about what your what a general audience is interested in on YouTube and how you can tie that into your particular niche. Some people call this trend warping. Uh, it's where it's taking your skill, so it might be, Lego building might be another one, 
and a popular theme, and it might be Nerf or Marvel superheroes. How can you merge those two together to create something that's unique and interesting to a broad audience? Uh, Venom Viper Gaming, does adding subtitles impact the video in any way? Well, look at it from this point of view. I think 10% of our audience watches our videos with subtitles turned on. So it's worth doing. We're engaging with 10% more of our audience. And there are, I guess, unconfirmed how important is this data that YouTube will scan your captions to a certain extent and help, and that will help them with metadata, again, serving it up to a, an audience. I'm not going to say that's going to have a huge impact because that's where you're looking into how many different signals the algorithm looks at, and probably the captions is one of them. So I would say if, it's, uh, if you're able to do it, and it's not going to take up too many resources, so it's not going to cost too much, and it's not going to take up too much time, then maybe try it. But I think this is one of these 80-20 things, whereby uh, you'll get 80% of a value from um, from the, the, the main things that you do. And then you may spend a long time doing captions, but you're only maybe getting a small return on it. So you have to maybe do a study on that. Uh, we do it here because we've got a budget to caption our content. Whether I would do it on a personal channel, if I if I had time, if there were a lot of people asking for it, I'm not sure. So there's a couple of things you need to weigh up there. I, I guess the, the, the bigger the channel, so like let's say you're getting 10,000 views per video and 10% of people are watching your captions that's an extra thousand people watching your content and if you're uh, looking at ad revenue and maybe selling products and services merchandising then maybe it's more viable if you're getting maybe a hundred views and you're going to get an extra 10 views by doing captions maybe it's not quite worth it just yet antonio magnia how to save watch time that is an interesting question i'm not sure what you mean maybe you can rephrase that so you meaning how to get more watch time uh, I'm not sure what you mean by that, so uh, maybe try using a, uh, re rephrasing the question a little bit there. Intro help. If I use hashtags, then the, when the video, then why is the video get, not getting more popular? I think the basic answer is that uh, trending hashtags don't seem to have that much of an impact unless people are searching specifically for that trending hashtag. And it's really strange to compete with hashtags because it seems to be that YouTube on search shows hashtags as the most recent videos rather than the most popular videos. I don't know why YouTube do that. and I think they still do that. I'd have to check. But yeah, hashtags are something that are really difficult to compete against. Um, so don't, I mean, yes, include them, obviously. It's another little bonus that you might get. But don't try and base the whole success of your channel on putting in the right hashtags. Game. It's probably more important to have a compelling title with that trending hashtag and that trending keyword rather than the, the hashtag itself, I would say. I don't think YouTube have, have, have hit, hit the right nail on the head with hashtags. It's there, but it seems to be far more useful in a micro con consumption social sites such as Twitter and Instagram. Uh, question. So, uh, Julian, you're asking another question here about closed captions. Uh, what about words I put on the screen mid-video to explain something? Do they get noticed by YouTube? So, YouTube apparently analyzes every single frame of a video, and I think this was proven by Daryl Lees, whereby Mr. Beast was stood in front of a, a Walmart, and so YouTube was able to determine like context, like maybe shopping, food, that type of thing. So putting words on the uh, videos, yes, they may have an impact. But again, I think this is one of these similar questions to closed captions and, um, and, and hashtags is like, how much value do you want to place on trying to add words in all of the videos in places? And we add wording in certain areas, but we don't notice a significant uptick in views just because we've added words on the screen somewhere. But it's worth testing. Absolutely, give it a try. But again, don't just don't spend too long worrying about these micro mini boosts unless you've got some really hardcore data uh, to prove that. Question I'm going to take now is on Horizonte Deli Eventi, if I pronounce that right. How do I deal with flames in comments? Do I have to encourage them, engage them or not? So here's what I'd first of all say about negative content, uh, comments, trolls and that type of thing. You're getting engagement. 
people people are caring enough to comment on your content, which is a good thing. Now, when they're commenting in a negative way, it's usually because there's a bit of envy there. We get a lot of people commenting on our videos saying, you got X hundred thousand subscribers and this video gets no views. And it's kind of like, well, okay, fine. If you think our content is not valuable because we don't get a certain amount of views on a certain video, that's all right. Our channel's got 30 million plus views now, so we think we're doing a good job here. And we concentrate on the people who are saying, I find your content really valuable. It's helped me grow an XXX. Boom. And I will celebrate that. For the people who send me negative comments, I'll, I'll happily take the comment, but I will just ignore it. Or I, I will give them a response saying, if, you're, if, 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 if all you're going to be is negative, then I'm afraid YouTube is not the platform for you to be a video creator because you'll always find something to complain about, whether it's other channels being successful when you're not, or whether you think the algorithm is against you. It, it's, there's always going to be something wrong in your mind. You can also set up uh, blocking features so you can hide a, a commenter's commenter completely from your channel if you want to, or you can have certain trigger words such as sub for sub, sub for me. You can make sure that all of those videos automatically go into spam. So that's also something else to um, think about. But I, I personally would say celebrate engagement and engage with the ones who are adding value to your channel and your community. Thank you for the super chat from X, X Exploring with Riley. They're two pounds. Uh, that is appreciated. Technical talks as a second question here. Uh, should you make videos? which are already on YouTube and are already popular, like some applications, tricks, etc. You can certainly try, uh, but, yeah, but understand this in that uh, if a video is already popular, you may appear in the search and suggested on that video, but how are you going to convince a person to click? For example, let's say uh, there's a really popular video that does 10 tips on the Samsung Galaxy S20 or 10 reasons to buy this Galaxy S20. What you could do is... 50 reasons. So what you're doing is something even bigger. You're giving a person more reasons to buy this or it's more comprehensive. You have to think about, again, why somebody should watch your content when they're already watching something of value from a bigger channel. So yes, by all means, try it. You're, you're tapping into already uh, trending topics, but just be aware that there's going to be a lot of competition there. So you, again, I've, I keep saying this, find a way to differentiate, your, differentiate yourself from the other competitors in your area. Uh, Kyle Atkinson, does the genre you pick for the video actually matter? I think you're talking about the category uh, and it can do. We've actually done a video on this. I think traditionally it had more of an impact from a viewer perspective and I, now I think it has more of an impact from a advertiser's perspective. So when an advertiser is saying I want to promote my um, my new gaming accessory, I want to do it on videos that are for, of a gaming category, I think it helps more for advertisers. I could be wrong about that because I think the, the rules are changing a little bit on that. Um, and obviously, you might as well categorize your content correctly because there might be uh, the auto-generated channels as well that YouTube creates on different topics where your videos might fall into if you have a really popular one. But usually it tends to be set it to a default and you're done. And really your channel is usually going to be about one topic. Ours is how to and educational. You could argue it's tech, um, but I think it's, uh, we've set it to one thing and we've not really thought about it since. Moise is the name. Um, you just made an account, so what's the difference between Pro and the regular uh, version? So if you go to our paid pricing plans, you will see all of the benefits you get with Pro. And I think we actually have a video on the on what you get in Pro. Essentially, you're unlocking a lot of a lot of tools in free. You will maybe have access to one thing. So, like with competitors, you may be able to add one competitor or three. I can't remember off the top of my head. But with Pro, you'll be able to have add. 10 or you'll have unlimited features again in the channel audits you'll see some blurred bits because we maybe only show you the top three videos that are performing on your channel in pro it might be the top 10 
Uh, so definitely go to our paid uh, pricing plan and you'll see all of the advantages you get with Pro. And with Boost, you just get access to absolutely everything. And of course, with Pro and Boost right now, you get full access to the VidIQ Academy. So for, I think, about $10 a month, you're getting a, 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 an incredible amount of training. And Dan puts this a good way. It's the same as maybe buying a, a mouse or or buying a coffee every single day. You'll get all of these VidIQ tools uh, if you just save on that. Next question I'm going to take here is from Intro Help. If I make people, if I help people make intros, how much impact will it give? Well, you're providing a value. You're providing a service to somebody. We've had two questions already about intros. And if you're able to add like splash intros, like branding intros, that would be super valuable to them. This is already a well-covered topic on YouTube though. So there's a lot of people who've already done this. So again, are you going to be offering something new, different or for free? That's where you're going to have to provide your unique selling point uh, with your intros, if that's what you're meaning. Uh, Charlie Padders asks, uh, what football team do you support? I support Huddersfield Town, but we're not doing very well right now, so I don't like to talk about it. But yeah, up the Terriers. We were in the Premier League for two seasons. Live the dream. I can retire a happy man knowing that we made it to a prom stands. If we won the FA Cup, I think that would be it. I would be done supporting any football teams. As for England, we're never going to win anything in my lifetime. Uh, so there we are. The sports influencer. Trying to start, start a sports channel. Some of my videos do really bad, but I have one video that got one and a half thousand views. Why are some doing, some doing good and some doing bad? Well, basically, as a smaller channel, you're always going to struggle to reach an audience uh, to begin with. But you've had what sounds like your first viral moment for your channel and when I talk about viral moments this is where a channel gets maybe 10 20 views per video and then you have this one video that gets a thousand views and that bang that is something that you've you've done well with now there could be a dozen reasons why this is maybe you targeted a particular uh, trending topic with a perfect title and a perfect thumbnail and that did really well what I would do is go back to that video and see is there a, any way I can leverage this exact topic again? So it might be, let's say it's a sports uh, topic and it was about um, the New England Patriots have had a really bad season this year. It might be a follow-up video saying, New England Patriots, what happens next for Tom Brady? So again, you're touching that same uh, keyword of a, of a sports team that you did in that really popular video. Find ways to leverage the success you've already had. We, talk, we call this the double down um, concept in the channel audit. You'll see that that video is performing better than anything else you have you encaptured a audience of a thousand people in that one video that's a, a a car park parking lot full of people to watch that one video maybe you want to invite them back in for another discussion another topic another conversation on that video topic and that's what i would always always suggest as a smaller channel uh, do I like Pokemon? I think I bought one Pokemon game, could not get into it. Uh, so no, I'm not a big Pokemon fan, but any uh, channel that's doing games right now and is a Nintendo fan probably wants to be looking at the Pokemon genre and how you can add a unique spin on that topic, I would say. Um... Antonio uh, Garrida, how to create irresistible uh, titles. So this is something that I is always a challenge for me. And basically what you have to do is the thumbnail is supposed to stop the viewer from scrolling down a feed and, and give them some sort of wow factor. And then the title has to create a, a question or a tension. It has to have some sort of e intrigue or value that makes the viewer want to click on it. Now, Casey Neistat is very good at this. Uh, he, he lives very cryptic titles that make you, and as a storyteller, that makes you compelled to click on the video to find out more. With education content, it's like some big uh, reward that you're going to get from this video, like how to save $500 a month uh, from from this one tip. Anybody would love to save $500 from this one tip that may take you five minutes to do. So yeah, it's uh, now we're, we're broaching onto a topic of clickbait here. It does have to be clickbaity in a certain extent that you want somebody to click on your video. 
as long as you provide value in that video and as long as people are watching the content and you're getting good feedback in likes and comments, then it's not clickbait. It's as simple as that. You're giving the audience what they want to watch, whatever that audience is. So you have to think along those. And somebody's somebody saying you hate clickbaiters. Again, you have to think about it. Whether or not you like Logan Paul or you like um, Jeffree Star, Shane Dawson, all those people who have like these, uh, the, the big wow factor in their content, the bottom line is they have an audience who love their content and don't believe it's clickbait. And they're successful for that. And we can complain about them as much as we want, but they're popular on the YouTube platform and there are always takeaways from their content to... Um, to to take for example logan paul that type of video content the thing i will say about their content it is very well edited it has all sorts of pattern interrupts changing the camera angle adding graphics noise effects almost every single second and it keeps their particular audience of a younger demographic engaged in the content they don't have time to get bored and that's really successful and i'd be I'd love to be able to do that more snappy um, transitions and, and changes in my content because I think I would I would benefit from longer watch time there. Question here, I'm sorry, I think your channel name is Russian, so I can't pronounce that, but you ask, what category should I choose for the channel about photography lessons taking place in nature? Uh, you say education or blogs. I'm thinking um, it might be film and entertainment, it might be blogs. Uh, again, we've talked about this. Think about, think about this from a uh, um, an advertiser's point of view, if they wanted to advertise on your content, what type of ta uh, demographic do you think they would be looking at? Would it be people who are uh, interested in educational content? Is it those who are interested in blogs, storytelling? Uh, I think you may have to decide a little bit there. Or maybe test. Maybe experiment with, with different categories. But again, don't get too caught up in that question of categories and let it affect your channel as a whole. Concentrate on the content itself. Uh, Epi Pixla Pixals Pixelaz. Sorry if I pronounce your name wrong. I'm gonna try and read it quickly. Would it be easy to start a gaming channel group with my friends with our individual channels where we upload different videos to us playing together, or one single channel where we play together? I think a group channel offers a unique perspective on gaming, but then you've got to, there's a lot of collaboration that's going to go on, and there's probably going to be creative differences as well that, uh, that maybe happen. So that's a big challenge. I guess as an experiment, you could probably collaborate. It's probably best uh, if you all have separate channels and collaborate, because what you're doing then is you're sharing each individual's audience among a collective. Whereas grouping a channel together, uh, that, that sounds logistically a, a bit of a nightmare. And I think long term, um, six months down the line, have, there's probably going to be people who are more enthusiastic about the channel than others. But I could be wrong about that. You could all be loving video games and you all want to get together. And there have been channels that have done this successfully, Smosh, Smosh uh, Games, for example, um, super successful in that area. But yeah, just think about, are all of the people who are start wanting to start now, do you think they're going to be dedicated to it a month, two months down the line? And if they're not, are you then stranded? And again, it goes back to an individual creating, uh, creating uh, content. Uh, another question here from Horizonte de Gali Ivanti. I, I, I kind, do kind of like saying that name. You spoke about the entry video. What about the exit video? Pretty simple. Don't hint to the viewer that you're ending the video. There are trigger words such as, hope you enjoyed this, Does that did that video make sense? Uh, thank you all for watching. And then there's another 30 seconds worth of outro. You do want kind of a hard stop there in terms of, maybe you're still talking to the audience, uh, like finishing off a video uh, and the important things. And then you've got end screens to the left of you. This is something I'm experimenting a little bit with as well. Or you just do a hard stop. The video just stops and you decide not to share any content and it immediately moves on to the next video. Just try and avoid trigger words like thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. We'll be back next week, that type of thing. Once somebody, I was actually um, in the bath and I could hear my partner um, watching a video uh, on the television, a uh, YouTube video. And the creator said something along the words of, hope you enjoyed that video, guys. And as soon as um, she heard that, I heard her switching to the next video. I don't know how long was left in that video, but the creator there could have lost one, two minutes worth of watch time because uh, the person said that trigger word. 
Next question. Uh, Andrea Magina, can you explain how monetization works? I couldn't really explain here. However, we have done a complete beginner's guide to monetization on YouTube, uh, on video, vidIQ. So I would suggest searching on YouTube for vidIQ monetization beginner's guide and you'll see a thumbnail with lots of green dollar symbols and start here watch that i think it's about a 50 minute video and if you're part of the vidIQ academy we've done an hours long course on how on monetization basically you need a thousand subscribers four thousand hours of watch time you need to follow the community guidelines and then wait for youtube to accept your channel into the youtube partner program that's the quickest way i can put it and good luck on that journey uh, Cardino, I make essay videos about Nintendo, and one thing I've noticed is that retention is pretty low, floating around 25%, mark on average, and I have tips on how to keep uh, videos like that interesting. Uh, so this is going to happen, let's say your video is an hour long, and 25% audience retention, that's still 10 minutes of watch time, which is pretty damn good on YouTube, but I guess maybe dividing it into d uh, proper chapters, and uh, like a, a quite a, maybe a, like a big pivot or shift. So there might be you're talking about uh, the, the 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 conception of a game for two minutes, and then you're talking about the production of the game for two minutes, and then you're talking about the release of the game for two minutes. Maybe break the video up into really specific chapters, even if you're not necessarily linking to them in the video description. Although you could do that with timestamps, or you could maybe at the start of a video list. We're going to cover all of these topics in the next. Um, in the next hour. Uh, maybe you could uh, introduce that into the title as well. It might be 25 things you didn't know about this particular game. And then you're breaking it up into bite-sized listicles. And people always like listicles because they're watching one thing, but they know something's coming next. And it's like, oh, yeah, I am finding this interesting. Now we're on to the next thing. Now we're on to the next thing. That's why people do like 20 tips or the best five uh, locations to visit. Listicles are... Uh, almost like a guaranteed win on your channel compared to the rest of the content that you're creating. So that's what I would suggest for making longer content. And you're doing something unique and original there. You're adding something, you're adding a uh, new value, uh, which is going into depth on stuff. And so I applaud you for that. Queen Yasmin, uh, what if you do the same type of video, same content as someone on there and their channel is growing faster than yours? How does someone grow just as fast as... Uh, okay. So basically, this is uh, the envy syndrome on YouTube, and I'm gonna I'm gonna say this simply: stop worrying about the competition, because you have absolutely no control over how successful or how much of a failure their channel is. You can only affect your channel. So what you can do is you can look at their channel analytically and say. Hmm, maybe their thumbnails are better than mine, or maybe their titles are better than mine, or it's because they have a stronger personality and I need to improve my on-screen camera presence. Think, think of it along those types of views, Be types of, types of, um, f think of it along those types of, uh, I'm getting lost in my words here. Essentially, unless your channel is a carbon copy of theirs, there's going to be different things and your audience is going to gravitate towards those things. And do you want to imitate a channel completely? If you're not offering anything new and their channel is already bigger than yours, then I'm afraid to say it, the audience is going to continue to gravitate to what they know best and who they are familiar with. So don't stop, wor stop worrying about what other people are doing. This is your journey. You don't know what that other channel's done. They may have had a video that was really successful for their channel, two years ago that you're not even aware of, and that brings a lot of views for their channel, it brings in a lot of subscribers, and that is their flagship video. Or they may have, uh, they may have paid for some advertising, and they're getting views that way. Or they have a bigger social presence on other platforms like Twitter and Instagram where they can direct people to their videos on YouTube. There's so many things to figure out and try and contend with that when you when you, you're just gonna get yourself into a cycle of depression and misery, worrying about others. I did that in the past, and when I started to worry about my content and how I was serving my audience, that's when I started to experience growth. So please stop worrying about others' 
on YouTube. Yes, they may be growing faster than your than you, and yes, you may think their content, you may think your content is better than theirs, but until you can prove that to your audience and your and YouTube consistently consistently, rather than trying to compete with them, you're just gonna get stuck in that rut. And with that, folks, it brings to an end this live stream webinar Q&A. I hope you enjoyed it. Just to remind you of a couple of things, if you haven't already downloaded the vidIQ extension, you can do so now in the link below. And if you're a brand new customer, you will get a 30-day free trial, which unlocks absolutely everything that you've seen in this product tour and the vidIQ Academy I was talking about as well. So if you want to learn everything we have to offer in that Academy, you can get the free trial right now and benefit from that. That's not going to last long. We are going to change that soon. We're going to, we're going to lock down the Academy and make it available to pay customers only. But right now, it is available to everybody who signs up for vidIQ using the link in the video description. It is for new customers only, though. I will uh, stress that. This live stream will be available as a replay pretty much the moment it stops being a live stream and so that you can re-watch everything that went on here. As I've already said, we have this amazing vidIQ Academy that we've just launched in 2020. You can save 30% on that uh, if you join us soon. And look at all of these courses that you get to enjoy uh, with vidIQ Academy, along with this, how to start your channel in 30 days. This is basically a 30 two video series and it gives you practical exercises at the end of every single day's worth of videos all right it's time to do some shout outs if you want me to say goodbye to you let's do it in the next couple of minutes and those include brendan walters soft game pay to win it's exploring with riley m bugua i sorry if i cannot pronounce your name right uh, pokemon master lol lover uh, deft shot black chini gaming i seem to remember we audited your channel yesterday pain g family mile z or z intro help charlie padders all of you thank you as always for joining the webinar and i will end with this time is the most important currency in the world in my opinion and you just spent some of that time with me i hope we've given you back all the value you could ask for and remember that is your job on youtube as well to give your audience value i'm getting better at that ending quote folks it's been an honor and a privilege i will see you on tuesday for channel audits in the meantime enjoy the rest of your video making day bye for now.